Today's video is going to be about abstract classes and interfaces. I'll be explaining the differences by the end of the video. So please watch the video till the end. Before going further, I'll take a moment and thank all of you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. I've reached my first milestone of 100 subscribers. I know it's small, but it motivates me to keep going. So thank you once again. Friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Soumya, and as I've already told you, I'll be first discussing the abstract classes. Now you know that I have made a class vehicle, and I've also made a class car that extends my vehicle class. I could have other classes such as a scooter or a truck extending my vehicle class. I can create an object of my car class, or I can also have a vehicle class reference that can hold a car or a scooter object. But have you thought how a vehicle object might look like? Well, I don't know. It might look like this or it might look like this. So, I also don't know how the instance variables of a vehicle class look like. Some classes are not meant for creating instances but only meant for inheritance and polymorphism. And yes, vehicle is one of those classes. Adding the abstract keyword in front of a class will prevent the compiler from creating an instance of a class. So you can see I have added the abstract keyword in front of my vehicle class. So now I can certainly not create the instance of my vehicle class, but I can definitely use my vehicle class as my reference type. Making a class abstract will make it useful only if you can extend the class. So my car vehicle class becomes useful only when my car class extends my vehicle class. There's also one more thing to notice that I have created the calculate speed method as an abstract method. So there's no implementation to the calculate speed method here. But my car class will provide the implementation of the calculate speed method. Also, if there are other classes like scooter and truck extending my vehicle class, then they will be providing their own implementation of the calculate speed method. If you add even one abstract method in a class, then you have to make that class as an abstract class. Also, an abstract class can have some non-abstract methods as well. There's another point here that if a car is extending an abstract class, then it will have to provide the implementation for all the abstract methods. Providing an implementation is just like overriding. So you can say that my calculate speed method in the car class the signature will remain the same as it is in the vehicle class. The implementation can vary from each class. Now let's take abstraction to the next level and discuss interfaces. We'll first understand this with an example, a scenario actually. Quite a few of us have started using electric cars these days. Electric cars do not have engines. Instead, they have batteries that get charged and run motors. So electric cars would have methods like run motor and charge. Now where do I put these methods for implementation? I can certainly not put these methods in my abstract vehicle class because then all the other classes that are extending my vehicle class will have to provide the implementations. I can also not put them in my car class because tomorrow if I have a van or a scooter that's electric, then what if the protocol changes from the car to scooter? and the method becomes from run motor to drive motor or move motor. Well, I can do one thing. I can make an electric class and the car class can extend this electric class. Oh, but I forgot. Java does not provide multiple inheritance. So car cannot extend electric and vehicle at the same time. Where am I going with all of this? Well, I'm going to my interfaces for rescue. Interfaces are 100% abstract classes. What this means is that you can define what a class will do, but not how it will be done. So interfaces have all methods as abstract methods and no methods with implementation. You can see that I have written an electric interface with two methods, run motor and charge, that are abstract methods and have no implementation. They are implicitly public and abstract. So I don't have to explicitly write public and abstractly. When a car class is 
implementing an interface that is it implements my electric interface it implements all the methods of an interface thereby agreeing for a certain behavior now you must be thinking what are the advantages of having an interface first of all it solves the problem of multiple inheritance so you can implement multiple interfaces without being stuck with the diamond ring and you remember that the diamond ring was the problem when the the child class did not know which inherited version would be called in interfaces since you do not have any implementation the child class will actually have to provide the implementation secondly the interfaces provide ultimate flexibility through polymorphism what this means is that in inheritance the class extending the other class has to be of the same inheritance hierarchy but in interfaces classes from different inheritance hierarchy can also implement it this way a car can have electric behavior and any other classes that want to exhibit electric behavior can also implement the electric interface so for example an electric fan can also implement the electric interface now some important points about interfaces interfaces can extend other interfaces similar to how a class extends another class a class implementing the child interface will have to provide implementations for all the methods of the interfaces of the inheritance hierarchy since the interfaces are backbone for polymorphism we can use the interfaces for reference type and can assign the class object to the interface reference type so here i have created a car object and assigned it to the electric uh, interface reference type e also any class that includes interface but does not fully provide the implementation for all its methods will have to be an abstract class the interfaces can have two access specifiers public and default because we need classes to implement these interfaces now since jdk 8 there has been a change in the interfaces we have introduced a default method that can have implementation inside it now the primary motivation for a default method was that if you wanted to expand an interface you can do it without breaking the code suppose there's a widely used interface and i want to add a new method to it then this will break the existing code because the implementation in the child classes for this method would not be found well i can do this by adding a default method by providing the implementation of this method inside the interface the classes will not have to implement this interface and thus the code does not break well then you also have to note here that default methods are very special purpose methods and they should not be used for implementing the how behavior of an interface we'll be discussing everything about this default behavior in our later videos by now you must be thinking of all the differences between the abstract classes and interface and when to use what let's discuss that an abstract class has to have at least one abstract method while in an interface all the methods are abstract an abstract class can have different access specifiers but an interface can have only public and default as its access specifier a class from the same inheritance hierarchy can extend an abstract class while classes from different inheritance hierarchies can implement an interface a class can only extend one abstract class at a time but a class can implement multiple interfaces at a time a class that is an abstract class defines a template or a guideline for a group of subclasses for example a vehicle class as an abstract class defines a template like all the vehicles will have to move stop apply brake but an interface defines a rule or a behavior for our classes so here my electric interface defines a behavior like run motor and charge for all the classes that's going to implement the electric interface both the abstract class and interfaces cannot be instantiated but still can have reference types if you find this content helpful please don't forget to like subscribe and share my video thanks for watching